Amen. Amen. So the title of my message tonight is how to use the armor of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will use me as an instrument. You will use me as a vessel to bless your people. Father, I submit myself to you absolutely. Let me not speak my word. Let me speak your word. And let your word bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let this let it cause a stir. Let it cause an awakening. Let it cause a revival. Let it provoke somebody onto good works. And let your people be lifted up to where they belong. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look at somebody and tell the person how to use the armor of God. Or oh, say it like you mean it. How to use... How to use the armor of God. Now, the reason why I am teaching you how to use the armor of God, because oftentimes we have heard uh, uh, so many messages and read so many messages about how to put on the armor of God. But we don't know how to use the armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go into scriptures, and then I'll start breaking it down for you. Ephesians chapter 6, the verse number 14 through 16. Stand therefore, stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth, with truth. The belt, truth. I'll be talking to you about it shortly. And having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, above all, above all. In other words, Everything that has been mentioned previously, this particular one is above what have been mentioned previously. Do you understand? It means that these that I'm about to mention, it supersedes and transcends the belt of truth and also the breastplate of righteousness. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith. Take me to 17. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. Next verse. Take note of the verse 18. Is the last verse I'm reading. Praying all. <laughs> you didn't hear that. Praying all. Not when you feel like it. Not when you are happy. Not when you feel like today I have to pray. I feel the anointing for prayer. I feel the anointing for intercession. But he said, pray all ways. With all prayer. You still don't understand. You see, if somebody that is grammarian and is reading this particular verse of scripture, and there is something we call tautology. Have you heard it before? <laughs> 
you know, repeating the same thing in the same sentence. Praying always with all prayer. Praying always with all prayer. It didn't say praying always with prayer. But he said praying always with all which means that prayer is more than one. There are different kinds, dimensions of prayer. There are different elements of prayer. There are different realms of prayer. And so Paul is saying that after you have put on the totality of the armor of God, pray all the prayers and not just pray all the prayers Monday and Saturday or Friday and Sunday or Tuesday, Friday, Sunday but pray what? Always. In other words, pray all the time. Consistency. I will leave that. I will come to that. So we have read this scripture. He said, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Say that with me. In the spirit. spirit. Say in the spirit. spirit. I am telling you, for the next four weeks, we are going to have a great time every Friday. We will just come and have buffet. (laughs) I'm telling you, we are going to have an awesome awesome time in the presence of God. It's going to be fantastic. I'm going to take my time to teach you, to break this thing down for you, to provoke you, to make you get to another level and dimension that you have never been before. Where you, when, when, when you want to pray, prayer no longer becomes a burden. Prayer becomes like your routine, your way of life. It becomes like a hobby. It becomes part of you. We are going to enjoy Friday services. Let me finish it. And watching therefore, and watching thereunto. Hmm. Hmm. I will repeat this again gradually, and I want you to watch something. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching. <laughs> and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Take me back to 14. Now, Stand therefore, having your loins, get about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. I want you to understand under the sound of my voice. And I know you have heard me say this many times and I've said it over and over and over and over again. Just as the heavens is real, hell is real. Just as God is so real, the devil also is real. Just as you and I, we are real, the same thing, the battle and the warfare is real. You see, the reason why we ignore spiritual warfare and we ignore the spiritual battles is because we live in the flesh and we live also in this world and we live in the physical realm and these battles goes on in the supernatural realm and in the spirit realm. 
And because we are made in a way that we believe what we can hold, what we can touch, what we can see, and what we can feel. If we don't see it, we can touch it, we can hold it, we can feel it, we ignore it. It means that it doesn't exist. It means that to us it is not real. That is why over the decades and over the centuries, believers have ignored spiritual warfare and they have ignored spiritual battles. And Satan has taken advantage of that and causing havoc in our lives. Havoc in our marriages, causing wreck and havoc as it relates to our destiny, as it relates to our career relationship, as it relates to our health, our ministry, our calling, our vision, our assignment, our mission. Because we don't believe that there is a spiritual warfare and there is a spiritual battle that is going on all around us every day, every second of every minute. This battle is invisible. This battle is unseen. This battle is taking place not in the physical realm. It's taking place in the spiritual realm, in the supernatural realm. Even though we don't see it, we don't hear of it, but yet we feel it. We feel it in our relationships. We feel it in our health. We feel it in our everyday life. We feel it even in our career. We feel it in everything that concerns us and in all our endeavors. We feel it because it has repercussions. It has ramifications. There is an impact that it creates in our lives whilst these battles are going on in the realms of the spirit. You see, your enemy is not your boss. Your enemy is not your sister. Your enemy is not your auntie. Your enemy is not your uncle. Your enemy is not your brother. Your enemy is the devil. And the reason is because your auntie has just allowed herself for the devil to use her. Which means that it is not the boss, but the spirit that is working behind the boss. It is not your uncle, it is not your sister, it is not your in-law, but the devil that is behind your in-law, the devil that is behind your boss, the devil that is behind your uncle, the devil that is behind your brother, that is the person we are supposed to be confronting. But oftentimes, because we don't believe in this spiritual warfare and in this battle that is going on in the realms of the spirit and in the supernatural, because we don't see it, we begin to attack each other. And the devil that is operating behind the scenes stands there and begins to laugh at us. So look at them. Let them fight among themselves. Let them kill themselves. They have no idea that I'm the originator of all this that is happening. So we attack ourselves and we leave the devil all by himself. And he's standing there and he's just watching and laughing. He's saying, mm, this thing is really working. It's really working. It is as a result of this that Paul began to talk about the armor of God. And when Paul was talking about the armor of God, there was something he said that we didn't pay attention to. Take me to the verse. L let me, take me to 13. I want you to watch something very carefully. He said, wherefore, wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God. I want you to read that with me. Let's go. Ready? Go. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor. I want you to repeat it again. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Now, do you realize that it is not a suggestion? Paul was he suggesting for us to take the armor of God. Now, the scripture that we just read and what you just repeated after me, it wasn't also a choice. It is an instruction, a command that as a believer, it is incumbent upon you to put on the armor of God. You don't need to be told. You don't need to be asked. And you realize also that nobody can come and put on you the armor. You must take it yourself and put it on yourself. Why are we putting on an armor? We are putting on an armor because the Bible makes us to understand that we are no civilians. We are soldiers. That is how the Bible describes us. The Bible doesn't describe us as civilians. The Bible describes us as soldiers. We are militants. We are warriors. Our minds, our attitude, and our mannerism and everything is regimented. That is why we cannot think like civilians. We cannot act like civilians. We are soldiers. And if we are soldiers, it means that we have a responsibility. Not only that, if we are soldiers, it means that we lived a disciplined life. We don't live anyhow. Our life is disciplined. You cannot eat all the time. There are certain places you cannot be. There are certain places you cannot go. There are certain drinks you cannot drink. It is incumbent upon you as a soldier to exercise. It is incumbent upon you as a soldier to know the weapons that you have in your arsenal and also how to use those weapons. If you don't know how to use the weapons that are available to you in your arsenals, then what is the essence of you being a soldier? You will be a casualty. You will be dead before you know it. Project the scripture again for me. The verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. You take, not somebody taking. Not a friend, not a family. Not a prayer partner. You take. You, 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 you take the whole armor of God. Why are you taking the whole armor of God? Project it for me. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. There is an evil day. That ye may be able to withstand. To withstand. It means that in the absence of the armor, you cannot stand the evil day. For you to be able to withstand the evil day, your armor must be in place. For you to be able to withstand the evil day. And the purpose of the armor is because... There is an evil day. And you and I as a believer, every day is an evil day. The devil wants you dead. The devil wants to frustrate you. The kingdom of darkness wants to bring shame upon you. The kingdom of darkness wants to bring reproach upon you. The kingdom of darkness is accusing you on daily basis. Not just daily basis. Every second of every minute, they are accusing you of something. They are telling God why he shouldn't intervene. They are telling God why he shouldn't turn your storms around. They are telling God why he shouldn't answer your prayer. They are telling God why he should stay away from you. It is an evil day for this cause and for this reason. Put on yourself the armor of God that ye may be able to withstand the evil day. 
We stand the evil day. There is an invisible battle that is going on all around us. But this invisible battle that is going on all, all, all around us, it is having a ripple effect on our destiny. That is why the Bible says that we should put on ourselves the armor of God because of the evil day. And watch this. And having done all to stand. And having done all to stand. Do, do you know what that means? I want to break it down for you. You see, the Bible admonished us to take the armor. To put on the armor. But putting on the armor is not enough. Because you see, when Paul was talking about the armor of God... Paul was talking spiritually in light of the Roman soldier. Because every description that he gave in the armor of God, that is what the Roman soldiers, that is what they wear. But Paul wasn't talking from the physical perspective, but he was talking from the spiritual perspective. Having said that, if you are a soldier and you are wearing the armor and you are in the battle and your armor is in place but you are not using the armor, they will kill you. You will die. You will be eliminated. You will be redeployed. By the time you realize you have been decapitated, by the time you realize the sword has pierced through your heart, by the time you realize an arrow has pierced through your leg, your stomach, in a part of your body. And so it is not enough to put on the armor. But after you have put on the armor, you must know how to use the armor that you have put on. And that is where this comes in. Let's go back to 13. And having done all, stand. And having done all. What is the having done all? After you have put on the whole armor of... <coughs> now you are ready to use it. <coughs> now you are ready to battle. Now you are ready to confront the powers of darkness. You are ready to confront that which confronts you. You are ready to confront your shame, the, the arrow of shame that the enemy is throwing at you. You are ready to confront the arrow of disappointment that the enemy is throwing at you. The arrow of, the, of sleeplessness and restlessness. You are ready to confront it because your armor is in place and it is not in place for showmanship. It is not in place for you to go and have a catwalk. This is not Paris Faction Week. It's not a runway. You put on the armor because you are battle ready. So putting on the armor it's not enough. You must learn how to use the armor. Having put on the armor, you must learn how to use it. And that is what I am teaching you from tonight. How do you use the armor? Why is the armor in the first place in place? Because of the evil day. Because of the forces of darkness that are working against you. Because of the demonic forces that are interfering with the divine agenda of God concerning your life. Because of the kingdom of darkness interfering and intercepting the dealings of God. The, 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 the prophecy and, and, and what God has said concerning your life. As a result of that, you should be battle ready every day, every night, every second, every minute. You should be ready for battle. In other words, you don't put off your armor. Your armor must always be in place. Because every day is an evil day. Satan doesn't go on vacation. If you think that Satan will go on vacation on you, 
It's a lie from the kingdom of darkness and it's a lie from him. Because Satan is never going to leave you alone. If he attacks your finances and it doesn't prevail, he will attack your relationship. If he attacks your relationship and it doesn't prevail, he's going to attack your health. If he attacks your health and it doesn't prevail, he's going to attack your career. If he attacks your career and it doesn't prevail, he begins to put doubt on your mind as it relates to what God has said concerning your life and as it relates to your destiny and your life. And he makes you, he tells you this. Are you sure you heard from God? Are you sure the Lord spoke to you? Are you sure that is the voice of God? Are you sure that prophet is a true prophet? Are you sure that prophetess is a true prophetess? Are you sure? He began to throw doubts just like he did to Eve. Has God said? Attacking the integrity of God and throwing doubts in the mind of Eve. So the devil is not going to quit on you. The devil is never going to give up on you. This battle, this spiritual warfare is constant. It's every day, every second, every minute. They are demonic forces that have been released against you. They are forces of darkness. They are spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places that have been released against you. And the assignment and mission is to frustrate you and is to see that the counsel of God and the purpose of God and the will of God doesn't materialize in your life. That is the reason why we must know how to use the armor. This battle is real. This warfare is real. The kingdom of darkness is real. The devil is real. We cannot walk in ignorance. We cannot ignore it. If you want to know how real the devil is and how real the kingdom of darkness is, look at your life and look at what is going on in your life. Can you tell me that it is not real? Look at your career. Look at your destiny. Look at how frustrated you are. Look at the disappointment and the shame and the reproach. Look at the barrages of the attacks from the kingdom of darkness. Look at the sleepless nights. Look at the restlessness that you have been having in your spirit. Your peace has been taken. Your tranquility has been taken away. You live in fear each and every day. Tell me that this battle is not real. Tell me that the devil is not real. This battle is real. The enemy wants to defeat you. The enemy want to make you a failure. But you and I, we are a child, we are children of God. And failure is not in our DNA. Amen. Defeat is not in our DNA. Disappointment is not in our DNA. Why? Because the person that we carry his DNA has never lost a battle before. Amen. And if he has never lost a battle before, how can we lose a battle? If he had never failed before, how can we fail? This warfare is real. This battle is real. Give me the verse 14. Let me start breaking it down how to use it. Stand therefore. You know why therefore? I've told you this all the time. There cannot be therefore without wherefore. And the reason why therefore is because of the evil day. The evil day. There is an evil day. And so therefore. So the evil day is wherefore. There is an evil day. And because of that evil day, therefore, take a stand. 
take a stand. Take a stand. And so, you see, when you put on the armor of God, I want you to look at me. When you put on the armor of God, it is not for decoration. After you have put on the armor of God, you are ready to confront the enemy. The purpose of the armor, it is not for defensive mechanism. It's for offensive mechanism. Why? Because you realize that the scripture that we just read, at it relates to the ammo, everything that was mentioned concerning the ammo, it covers the front. There is none that covers the back. In other words, we run into the battle. We don't run from the battle. If you run and you turn your back, you are dead. You take the battle to the gates of the enemy. You take the battle to the camp of the enemy. You take the battle to the covens of the witchcraft. You enter into their shrine. You enter into their coven. You enter into their chambers. You enter into their secret place. And you declare war over them. Having put on the whole armor of God. The armor is to confront your fears. The armor is for you to confront that ancestral spirit, that generational curses that has been but that has been frustrating you and turning your life upside down. It is for you to confront that generational curse, that ancestral spirit. It's not for you to just wear the armor and just be there and doing nothing. The armor must be in place for battle. And when you wear it, it should give you the temerity, the audacity. It should give you the competence. It should give you the ability to run into the battle and confront any Goliath, any spirit, any giant in your life and to bring them down. When you put on the armor, you are not intimidated by the walls of Jericho. You can confront the walls of Jericho. You are not intimidated by Goliaths. You are not intimidated by Chambalites and the Tobias. You are not intimidated by the Hamans. Because you are well equipped and well endowed for the battle and for the spiritual warfare. And the armor that is in place, there is nothing that can infiltrate it. There is nothing that can penetrate it. You are not wearing the armor for sure. You are wearing the armor because you are battle ready. Let me tell you, some of the things that is going on in your life, if you don't take a stand to fight, you will forever live. Forever live with that shame and reproach. You must rise up and fight. Don't stop fighting. Fighting. Don't quit fighting. <laughs> the enemy will not stop fighting you. And so you don't stop fighting him. I am ever ready for the devil. Any day, any time. I will meet him in the air. I will meet him under the sea. I will meet him in the forest. I will meet him beneath the waters of the, of the earth. I will meet, wherever he goes, I'm battle ready for him. I am so ready to the stand that sometimes when I'm sleeping, most of the time I'm praying. My spirit man is praying. <laughs> because this battle, this war is real. It's real. It's not a joke. It is not fictitious. It is not a folk tale. It's not a story. It's real. Stand therefore, having your loins geared about with truth. The belt of truth. The belt of truth. The belt of truth. In other words, you cannot come into the battle without wearing the belt of truth. You must have the belt of truth in place. And do you realize 
That is the belt that holds all the armor together. If my belt is not in place as I'm talking, my pants will fall. And there will be a commotion all around here. The revival that will take place here, it will, it will spread all over Georgia within a split second. And so the belt holds all the other arm in place. It holds it together. And so the belt of truth is extremely important. You know, Charles Spurgeon uh, 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 put it this way, pray this prayer. He said, God, give us the ability to be able to discern right from wrong. But you see, that is not the powerful aspect. The next one is more powerful. He said, give us the ability to discern right from wrong. And give us also the ability to be able to discern the almost right from right. The almost right from right. That is the more dangerous one. Because when the enemy is speaking to you, he speaks to you in the light of almost right. And so if you don't know the right, you take the almost right. You have been deceived. And there are so many that have been deceived. And you know why they have been deceived? Because the belt of truth is not in place. The belief, the lie is not in place. So they believe the lie of the devil and the lies that the enemy throws at them. They buy it and they run with it because the truth, the belt of truth is not around their waist. Around their waist. You see, Satan will not come telling you an outright lies because he knows that you are a believer of the word. He knows you are a child of God. And anything that contradicts the word, you won't buy it. And so when he is talking to you, <clears throat> he doesn't use curse words. Because he knows you don't like curse words. And if he use curse words, you immediately know that that is the devil. When he comes to you, he doesn't use foul languages. Because he knows that when he uses foul language, immediately you are going to detect him and you are going to know that this is not God. This is not the spirit of God. This is the devil. And so you are going to resist him and you are going to cast him out. And so he will not come using foul language. He will not also come using worldly language. He will not come using filthy language. Because he knows that you are not conversant with that kind of language. Because you are a child of God. And you know that your words must be seasoned with salt. And so when Satan is attacking your belt of truth, he comes speaking the same language. He doesn't come saying, I am a witch. He doesn't come saying, I am a wizard. He doesn't come and say, I am a psychic. He doesn't come and say, I am the devil. I am the agent of the devil. He comes as an angel of light. He doesn't come as an angel of darkness. He comes as an angel of light. And the reason is because you can differentiate between the angel of darkness and the angel of light. And so it is more easy to resist. It is more easy to push him away. It is more easy to rebuke him. But when he pretends, when he puts on that, that light that is not real and he comes to you, you entertain him. And then he begins to speak to you. He begins to talk to you. And no marvel. You know what that means? Don't be shocked. No marvel. Don't be, don't be amazed. Don't be in awe. Don't be surprised. Don't be outstanding. Give me more adjectives. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. 
Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised because Satan himself can transform himself into an angel of light. So when Satan is coming to you to lie to you, to deceive you, to derail you from the path of righteousness, he doesn't come as an angel of darkness. He comes as an angel of light. If your belt of truth is not in place, you will not be able to discern. You will not be able to differentiate. You will not be able to detect and to know immediately that this is not God. This is the devil. The guy is trickery. You see, when Jesus finished fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, what the first temptation is this. And that temptation, I'm telling you something, is the most trickiest among all the other temptations. I will break it down for you. It is the most dangerous, the most trickiest, and, and you must have the word in the inside of you, and you must have the truth in place for you to be able to detect and to discern and to know that this is not God, it's the devil. Jesus had just fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The man has not eaten anything for 40 days, and 40 nights. You must understand. He is hungry. He was in the wilderness. And in the wilderness you got to understand. That there is no water. There is no food. There is absolutely nothing. And when the tempter came to him. He said if thou be the son of God. Command that these stones be made bread. Now, I want you to watch this thing very carefully. Jesus had finished fasting. He was hungry. If he is hungry, then it means that he needs to eat to gain his strength, to gain his energy, to recuperate. And then Satan shows up and Satan said, I know you are hungry. I know you just finished your fasting. Great. But you know, Turn these stones into bread. Not for me to eat. For you to eat. I want to ask you something. And don't be overly spiritual. Be honest. What is wrong with that? Tell me. Humanly speaking. Logically speaking. Rationally speaking. What is wrong with that? I have fasted 40 days and 40 nights. I am hungry. It's not like I'm still fasting. I've ended the fasting. So I have the right to eat. Satan shows up and Satan says that. Anyway, you are the son of God. Basically, that is what he said. Because for Satan to say, if you are, in other words, he knows that he is. If you are, it means he knows that he is. Turn this stone into bread. And for him to ask him to turn the stone into bread, it means that Satan also knows that he has the ability to make that happen. Turn the stone into bread and eat it yourself. What is wrong with that? And you see how he came. He didn't say turn the stone into snake. He said, turn the stone into bread and eat. Because you are the son of God. You can do anything. You can change anything. You can make things happen. You see how trickery the enemy is. And how subtle the enemy is. That is why your belt of truth must be in place. And the reason why Jesus didn't do it is because there are thin lines and fine lines in what he said to Jesus and for Jesus to do. And the reason why Jesus refused to do it because Jesus had the belt of truth truth in place what is the belt of truth in place jesus knew that he was the son of god and he doesn't need to prove it he doesn't need to prove it 
for the devil to know that he is the son of God. So Jesus refused to do it. In other words, Jesus knew who he was, which is the truth. And so whatever the enemy is throwing at him, he didn't bite because the truth was in place. The question I want to ask you tonight, those of you that are here and those of you that are watching me by live streaming, do you have the truth in place? The reason why we buy the lie and the deception of the enemy and the almost truth of the enemy because we, have, we don't have the truth in place. That is why when the devil tells you that you will not make it, you buy it. But when you have the truth in place, you tell the devil, you are a liar. I have already made it. Because you have the truth in place. When the devil comes to you and the devil tells you that the prophecy will not come to pass. Your destiny will not manifest. Your greatness will not materialize. You tell the devil, you are a liar. Because the Bible says he will perfect that which concerns me. He will perfect it. That which concerns me, he will perfect it. Amen. You tell the devil that he is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, then shall he not do it. And as he spoken, then shall he not make it good. Because you have the belt of truth in place. The devil speaks and you tell the devil. He said, devil, who is he? Who is he? Lamentation 337. The Bible says, who is he that say that he? Satan, who are you? Who are you to tell me that this sickness will kill me? Is that no bombing Gilead? Is that no physician? Is that no physician? Has it not been has it not been said? And is it not written? And have you not heard that by his stripes we are healed? Is it not written? And have you not heard that he set forth his word and it healed them and delivered them from their destruction? You know why I'm quoting all these scriptures? Because I have the truth in place. I have the truth in place. I am not buying the lie of the devil. I am not buying the deception of the devil because the truth is in place. Whatever the enemy tells me, I, I contain and I confront the lie with the truth. I confront the deception with the truth. I confront the almost truth with the truth. The absolute truth. The belt of truth must be in place. I won't die in an accident. It is not possible. I will not have a plane crash. Satan, you are a liar. You cannot put this fear in me. I am not dying in a plane crash. I will not die a shameful death. This sickness, this disease, this infirmity, this affliction cannot kill me. Because it is written, mark the end of an upright man. His end is peace. His end is peace. I cannot die a shameful death. It is not possible. It is not, as you are seeing me standing here, I know how I will die. The day I will die, I will come and preach. I will not be sick. Sickness will not touch me. Affliction will not touch me. I will be well, strong, energetic. I will come. I will preach to you powerfully. Lay hands, prophesy. After I finish, I go and sit on my chair and just check out. That is why when I'm in a flight, I know the flight will land. Because I know this is not how I will die. If the flight has been marked to crash, the fact that I am in that, fl that flight will land safely. It's not possible. I know I can't die by accident. And so it doesn't matter what kind of accident that happens. I know I'm coming out without a scratch because I know that is not how I will die. The belt of truth. The belt of truth. The belt of truth. Satan is telling you things. Demeaning things. 
Satan is telling you how you have failed, how you are an entity, how you are a nobody, how he has finished you. This is the end of you and giving you examples of your mother, of your father, of your uncle, of your aunt, of your siblings, of your friends. You tell the devil you are a liar. I have the truth in place for it is written for I know the thoughts that I think towards you saith the Lord not man saith the Lord for I know the thought that I think towards you in other words you yourself you don't know what I'm thinking about you if he says I know it means you you don't know that is why we get worried and God look at us what is wrong what is wrong I got it together what what, what is her problem why is she crying that is why in my work with God, I have come to a place. I will not lie to you. Nothing bothers me. I'm telling you, nothing. I, I don't worry about anything. I don't, I don't allow anything to give me heart condition. Never. I don't go to bed having sleepless nights because there is some kind of problem that is disturbing me. I am tossing back and forth. Back and forth. God, if you have called me, prove me. Prove it. Show a sign. Let the earth shake. Let there be earthquake. Let there be lightning. Show me yes. I, let the roof go off. Let me see you up here. Come down with your angel. Because if you don't do this, I will die. I, I'm telling you, I have come to a place in God. I don't allow anything to worry me. Nothing. Amen. You know the reason why? Because I know he is in control. Amen. He is in control. He is in control. When you know that he is in charge, when you know that he is in control, you don't get worried. Amen. I am always cool, calm, and collected. Amen. I am very composed, even in the midst of storm. Yes. Very composed. No trouble. I have matured. I was young before, and in those days I fret about everything and have sleepless nights and get worried about everything, my reputation and everything. But I have come to a place where I don't worry anymore. I am not concerned about anything anymore. I am very relaxed, chillax in him because I have the belt of truth in place. In place. This is how you use the belt of truth. You don't just put it around your waist. Use it. Satan said, I'm destroying this marriage. You say, Satan, no. <laughs> it's a lie. It's a lie. The lie slang it. It's a lie. It's a lie. Why is it a lie? That which God has put together, let no man. <laughs> it's not just man, no. Even spirit. Let no man, no spirit, put us under. It's a lie. It's not possible. <laughs> it is not possible. Let no man, the belt of truth. The belt of truth. Satan looks at you and Satan tells you that you see, everybody is ahead of you. Look at your mates. Look at your colleagues. Look at your contemporaries. They are all way ahead of you. Look at the achievements. Look at the accomplishments. Look at you. You have nothing to your name. You tell the devil, I have the belt of truth in place. The race is not to the sweet. And the battle is not to the strong. For the Bible says that it is not of him that will it, or of him that run it, but it is of God that showeth mercy. And it is also written, he taketh the poor from the dust, and the beggar from the refuse heap, or from the garbage. And he put them among princes that they might inherit the throne of glory. Amen. Let the devil know that chariot and horses are prepared for battle. But the victory comes from him. Let the devil know that promotion 
doesn't come from the east or the west or the south, but the promotion comes from him. I like it when the Bible says he put one down and he lifted another. I feel something here. <laughs> you see the oil I've been talking about on Sunday. I feel it. I feel it. He put one down and he lifts another. Yes, sir. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea, his name shall be praised. His name shall be exalted. Don't count me out. The fact that I'm at the back does not mean that you have gone ahead. Uh, for the Bible says the first shall become the last and the last shall become the first. <laughs> I want you to critically analyze and check and watch carefully. Those who were ahead of you, where are they today? Yeah. Where are they today? Oh <laughs> Those that you thought that they were somebody, where are they today? Where are they today? <laughs> you know, don't call me Grant. Go to Ghana. My mates, they queue to see me. And they don't call me Grant. We are not mates. <laughs> Even though we were in the same class. Went to the same lectures. We were in the same hall. But they don't address me, Grant. Level has changed. And those were people that didn't want to identify with me whilst we were in school. I didn't have any friend. My friend was prayer in the green grass and the woods. But when they hear that I'm in town, they line up. And when they are talking to me, they are careful. They mind their words. The race is not to the swift. So when the devil is telling you you are late, you tell the devil. <laughs> Listen, it's just a matter of time. Amen. It's just a matter of time. There are some of you, you are troubled. You are perplexed. You have come to the place of helplessness and hopelessness. And you have concluded that this is it. It's a lie. The only reason why you are saying that this is it is because you are not using the belt of truth. You are not using it. You know, I keep on telling you. I, I'm, I'm telling you, mark my word. I will take Georgia. I, I will take Georgia by storm. I will take it. I will take Georgia by storm. You mark my word. Mark my word. I would. I am not here to be counted among the other pastors. He was also a pastor in Georgia, or he's also a pastor in Georgia. He has a church in. No, I am here on assignment and mission, and my assignment and mission is to take this city for God, is to shake this nation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is why I am here, and I am not intimidated. I'm not intimidated. It, this, it doesn't trouble me at all. It used to. It used to. It doesn't. I am cool, calm, and collected. Very cool, calm. Because I will not let the devil intimidate me because I have the belt of truth. The belt of truth. The belt of truth. Belt of truth. This place is too small. <laughs> I know what God has shown me and I know what I have seen. It's too small. It's too small. People will come from far and near. Senators will come. Presidents will come. They will come from everywhere. They will say, if you want to meet God, if you want to have an encounter with the supernatural and with the power of God, if you want God to you want to meet him and for God to be real in your life, go to prayer city of Tel Georgia. God is there. God is there. I have the belt of truth in place. The belt of truth in place. My wife always asks me, sometimes there is a major storm that we find ourselves in. And my wife will say, first of say, how can you be so calm and be jovial and be walking about like there is nothing happening? There is nothing happening. What is happening? You see, I don't give credence to the activities of the enemy. When I see it as something happening, something will happen. Huh. 
The devil is not my mate. What, what are you talking about? He is not my mate. We are not equal. We don't rub shoulders. I am seated with Christ Amen. in the heavenly places. <laughs> seated with Christ. I am not operating at his level. We are not equals. We are not mate. I am dangerous. I don't operate in lower realms. I operate in higher realms. We are seated with Christ. Far above. Read your Bibles carefully. Far above principalities and powers. Far above. Not close. Far above. Do you understand far? Not just far. Far and above. We are not equals. We are, we are not mates. The only reason why we feel that the devil is more powerful and he intimidates us, we don't have the belt of truth in place. We don't have the belt of truth in place. But when you have the belt of truth in place, when the devil speaks that deception, you let him know, I know your lies. You can go and lie to others, not me. Wrong address. Wrong address. You can't lie to me. <laughs> you cannot lie to me. So just wearing the armor is not enough. You must learn how to use the armor because of the evil day. Because of the evil day. Therefore, stand. Take a stand. Take a stand. Unmovable. <laughs> Unmovable. You know, today the Lord spoke to me concerning something this evening. You see, when David confronted Goliath, he didn't measure the strength of Goliath. Do you know why? He didn't have to measure the strength of Goliath because he knows God. <laughs> you didn't get it. When David confronted Goliath, now you got to understand that before he came into the battle, the king Saul had lectured him about Goliath. How Goliath has been a warrior from the days of his youth. How Goliath is the Philistine champion, taller than everybody. And the person that was lecturing David, he is taller than anybody in Israel. Read your Bible. The Bible says that when Saul stand, he was taller than anybody and everybody in Israel. Everybody was at his shoulder. The guy was, was a giant. And he was telling David, the small boy. <laughs> the small boy. I want to read the small boy. He is a small boy in age, but his spirit is an old man. Yeah. <laughs> because the spirit that he has in the inside of him is not a small boy spirit. You know the spirit, ancient of days. Ancient of days. He had a ancient of days that has possessed him and taken hold of him. And so, after all the lechery of King Saul to intimidate and to put fear in the young boy, the young boy went to the battlefield without weighing the strength of Goliath. And the reason was because he knew God. Yeah. And knowing God is enough. Yeah. Knowing him is enough. That is why when Goliath said, hey, you, do you think that I am a dog and you have come with uh, uh, small stones and uh, with a slingshot? You, you think I'm a dog? Hmm. I'm going to kill you and other things. Hmm. Because David had the ammo and the belt of truth in place, he responded. He said, for you come with spears and sword and shield. But I have come in the name of the Lord God Almighty. So sometimes we must learn when the belt of truth is in place. You go to them and tell them, you are fighting me with physical weapons. 
you are fighting me with physical weapons but I am not fighting you with physical weapons you can insult me all you wanted you can scandalize me all you wanted you can character assassinate me all you wanted you can falsely accuse me all you wanted but I know that this battle is not a battle that is physical it is not a battle that is flesh no one that the Bible says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal the carnal that means it is not fleshly weapon it is not physical weapon and so you fight me with the physical and the carnal weapon but I will make you in the spiritual realm the spiritual realm I will fight you by the supernatural I will draw the sword of the spirit and engage you in the spirit realm if I defeat you in the spirit realm I have defeated you in the physical realm the belt of truth the belt of truth you see when your belt of truth is in place you don't respond to the naysayers. <laughs> I want to say that again because it's a rema word for somebody. When your belt of truth is in place, you don't respond to the naysayers. You don't respond to them. You don't need to explain anything to them when the belt of truth is in place. You don't need to defend yourself. You see, when the belt of truth is in place, you don't need to advertise yourself. Don't market yourself. You don't need to do all that. <laughs> when the belt of truth is in place, you know it's just a matter of time. <laughs> you know it's just a matter of time. TDJs, the message you have been preaching that people are going crazy. Woman thou art loose. Woman thou art loose. That people are great going crazy today. He was preaching that message long time ago. Long time ago, when he was in West Virginia, he was preaching the same message. Nobody was hearing. Nobody was crazy about it, but it was just a matter of time. Amen. It was just a matter of time. When you have the truth in place, you don't fret. You are not worried. You are not in competition with anybody. You are not in a haste. You are cool, calm. You, you have all the patience in place. Because you know it is just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Get your loins with the belt of truth. That is why everything Satan is telling you is a lie. You won't die like your father. You won't die like your mother. <laughs> you will not be a failure like your father. You will not be a failure like your mother. What they couldn't accomplish and achieve, you will accomplish it and achieve it. Even though you came from the alloys, your DNA is different. Your DNA is different. I have been to places. I have met people that my dad never met. Didn't even dream about it. I have been to places and I've met people. My dad didn't have that opportunity, but I came from his loins. But my DNA is different. Amen. <laughs> the day I gave my life to Christ, my DNA was switched. Amen. This DNA is the DNA of the Alpha and Omega. <laughs> that is the DNA you and I carry. <laughs> that is why I usually say, and I will say it again, when I say you are gone, you are gone. Amen. Do you believe that if Jesus said go, you are gone? Yes. How many of you believe that? If Jesus said you are finished, how many of you believe that you are finished? Yes. Now, if you believe that if Jesus say you are finished, you are finished, and I'm a carrier of his DNA, then when I tell you you are finished, you are finished. There is nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. 
There is a scripture that I love so much in the Bible. <laughs> people, were, people were arguing, is, 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 is this the son of God? Is it God? They were arguing about Jesus. This guy has been calling himself, is, is he God? Is he God? Is he God? Jesus turned and he said, if you see me, you see the father. <laughs> he just tell if you see me, you see the father. Do you know what that means? <laughs> what it means is that I carry the father DNA. <laughs> I am a replica. I'm a clone of my father. <laughs> you see me, you see the father. <laughs> if you have not had Jesus encounter, if you see me, you have seen Jesus. <laughs> if you want to visualize how Jesus is, look at me. Exactly how Jesus is. You see me, you see the Father. <laughs> Listen, don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let the devil lie to you. Use the belt of truth. Use it. Use it. If they tell you, hey, we have gone to the shrine, we have done voodoo, we have finished you, we will see what you will become. I have your destiny in my hands. I have your life in my hands. I made you. I cannot make you. You tell them it's a lie. The Bible says that I was created and made in the secret place. Have you read it before? I was created, mold, shaping. God breathed. After he had formed me out of the dust of the earth, he breathed life into my nostrils and I became a living being. Not in the public, in the secret place. In other words, it was just me and God. And so how can you describe my physical, spiritual anatomy? When I was created in the secret place, how can you tell me that you made me and you can make me? You have no idea what is in the inside of me. You don't even have a clue what is in the inside of me. For my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. You can't tell me that uh, your future, I have your future. Who are you? Who, who are you? Go, go and ask Herod. When he locked up Peter in the prison and was waiting to kill him on Easter. And the Bible says that he wore his royal regalia and sat on his throne. And he started giving philosophical speeches. And the people started shouting. And they were saying, this is not the voice of a man. This is the voice of God. God said, what? What? What are they saying? Are they saying that the voice of my creation is the voice of the creator? Let me show these people that I am the creator that wasn't created. Right there, the angel of the Lord smite him in the presence of everybody. His voice cannot be the voice of God. Be careful how you brag, because some of you, your bragging will end you into your grief. Be quiet. Do this. Be quiet. Be quiet. You talk too much. Quiet. Be quiet. Your talking will land you in the grave and will bury you very well. I won't do that though. I will send either Pastor Ola or Pastor Vicky to go and do the burial. I don't do burial. Hallelujah. Amen. The belt of truth. Somebody say the belt of truth. Belt of truth. Rise on your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. I am telling you, by the time I'm through with you, in the next four weeks, ay, 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 
how to use the armor. You will be so angry. You will be walking and you will be looking for the devil. I'm telling you, you will, you will, you will find the devil and the witches and the wizards and the agent of the devil. You will look for them. They won't look for you. You will find them. And you will put your feet on their neck. <laughs> we are going to have exciting times every Friday in the next four weeks using the armor of God. We have heard too much of putting on the armor. If, if after we have put on the armor, how do we use it? How do we use it? So there are so many that have put on the armor and they are just standing there. If you don't understand, go and ask David. And Saul gave him his armor. He wore the armor, but he couldn't move. You know why he couldn't move? Because he couldn't use the armor. He didn't know how to use the armor. The armor was too heavy for him. There are so many that are wearing the armor, but they don't know how to use the armor. And if you don't know how to use the armor, it doesn't matter how in place the armor is, you will be a casualty. That is why it's essential, it is imperative, it is of utmost importance that you know how to use the armor. And in the next four weeks, I will teach you how to use this armor effectively. 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 Today I just dealt with the belt of righteousness. The belt of truth, sorry. The belt of truth. The next one is the breastplate of righteousness. Next week, Sunday, I will be talking about the breastplate of righteousness. Hallelujah. You know, um, before um, we proceed, I want you to walk up to somebody, at least three people, and ask them, is your belt of truth in place? Ask them. Is your belt of truth in place? Thank you for watching this message. For more information about this message or the ministry, call us at 770-941-1934 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com.